In this video, you'll discover, does fasting actually fight off viruses? One of the top questions you've all been asking me over the past couple weeks is, can you actually use fasting in order to help fight viruses? Now, I know what's at the top of your mind. Can you use fasting to fight the coronavirus? And the truth is, is that wasn't something that I was well versed on, simply because, you know, over the past several years of talking about intermittent fasting, it wasn't how we were going to use intermittent fasting or any fasting for that matter to fight viruses, especially the coronavirus, but just how we could use it to benefit our health in other ways. So I had to dig into the research quite a bit. Now, the other thing is, is that there is no coronavirus fasting research out there because this whole thing didn't exist many months ago. So here's what we had to do. We had to basically dive into the research, put a lot of practical thought to it, draw some conclusions, and then of course I'm going to share that information with you. And at the end of this video, I basically share with you how I would proceed with using fasting in order to boost my health during this time and fight viruses. So stick around to the end. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'm going to help you excel your health and your life. Let's go ahead and dive in here. Now, when we talk about fasting, one of the major benefits we're going to get is autophagy. I know you've heard this before. You're familiar with the topic of autophagy at this point. Now, autophagy is basically when you're going and breaking down damaged old cells that aren't working properly and you're replacing them with good healthy ones. Now, the benefits that fasting offers when it comes to autophagy is going to help recycle damaged immune cells. And through this process, you're going to get those healthy new immune cells and it's going to boost your immune health. Now, the other thing that I've been talking about quite a bit recently is your immune system is amazing. It's an antifungal, it's an antibacterial, and it's an antiviral. So by boosting your immune system is going to help you take action steps in order actually preventing sickness and illness and infections in your future. So here's the thing is that I'm all about taking the natural steps in order to boost your health. I mean, if you've heard anything I've been talking about over the past couple of weeks, I've been talking about how you use a diet, specifically a ketogenic diet in order to boost your health during this time, how to do proper supplementation. And what I'll do is I'll put a lot of complementary topics to this in the description. I'll put links to a lot of complementary videos. Okay. Check those out if you want to, you know, just safeguard your body and, and make your immune system bulletproof during this time. So autophagy is going to use those old parts, make new ones, and boost your immune health, which is pretty important. Next here is going to be beta hydroxybutyrate. Okay. Now, this is something that is a byproduct of burning fat on your body. So basically, what happens is when you're fasting, you switch from a sugar burner to a fat burner. As you start to burn fat, you get fat oxidation, and a byproduct of that is BHB beta hydroxybutyrate. Now this beta hydroxybutyrate is pretty cool because what it does is it blocks inflammation, which is going to be one benefit here. And that inflammation is going to help keep uh, just the, the nasty inflammation that you can get from a viral attack. That storm of inflammation is going to help keep it down, keep you a little bit healthier during this time. But also the beta hydroxybutyrate has been shown to help boost your immune function. Once again, we're boosting that immune function in order to go in and make sure that we don't get these sicknesses, these illnesses that so many people are getting during this time. So beta hydroxybutyrate is also a byproduct of fasting because you're going to get yourself into the state of ketosis. And therefore, you know, fasting has that benefit. Okay. Once again, there's not coronavirus fasting information out there. However, we know that fasting does certain biochemical processes in the body, physiological processes, and these different processes are researched. So once again, drawing a little bit of conclusion here, but that's still okay. Next, we're going to talk about heart health, okay? Because one of the things that we know that when you have any type of virus, influenza, if you have the coronavirus, having particular conditions can be very devastating and lead to even death. So heart disease is one of the major ones we've been talking about. Now, the good news is fasting can actually help you with heart health problems because uh, heart disease is the biggest risk factor we want to pay particular attention to it. Fasting can actually help balance your cholesterol, decrease blood pressure, hypertension, and also help promote heart healthy cells through the process of autophagy. You know, you break down some of those old broken down heart cells and you replace them with good, healthy new ones. And so basically we can improve our heart health through fasting. This is one way. Once again, we're kind of bridging this gap here because there is no specific research. So if we can improve our heart health and some of these conditions that are leading to a higher potential of really negative results from the coronavirus, then that's a positive thing. Insulin resistance is another major one. Okay. This is the second highest risk factor. If you get influenza, if you get the coronavirus, that is likely to put you in a really bad spot. 
Specifically, what the research shows is if you have coronavirus and you have heart disease or if you have diabetes, it basically increases your chances of needing a ventilator, needing to be hospitalized, or even having fatal results from the virus by 79%. Okay, so that's why these two conditions are a big deal. And it's important to understand that fasting can help with both of them. There's nothing that works better than utilizing some intermittent fasting to drive down glucose, drive down insulin levels, and naturally reverse the problem with type 2 diabetes. So when you have high blood sugar and you have high insulin levels, essentially you damage proper immune function and you also are going to have a pretty garbage diet. If you're someone who has type 2 diabetes, you have hyperinsulinemia, hyperglycemia, then you got a pretty poor diet, probably high in sugar and high in carbohydrates. Those both are going to depress your immune system as well. So using fasting, you can really help bring those levels down and improve your immune health. So insulin resistance is another major condition that fasting helps with and we want to actually fix during this time so we can decrease our risk factors here. Next here is fasting for recovery. This is where it kind of gets a little bit more interesting and something that I want to pay particular attention to. So what studies show is that what happens naturally is that when we are sick and we have a virus, we have a bacterial infection, we have a lack of appetite, okay? Through that lack of appetite, what it allows is for our body to focus on healing. And so as our body is focusing on healing and not digesting food and expending that energy, essentially you're able to fight the infection better, okay? So one study shows that lack of appetite is just a natural way. It's your body's innate intelligence showing you, okay, this is basically what we have to do in order to to survive. Let's stop eating. Let's focus on healing. I mean, that's why when people get sick, a lot of times they lose their appetite. They stay in bed. They get lots of rest. I mean, when my kids are sick, it's surprising how long they'll go through a fast before they'll even want to eat. And we let their body, we just basically as a parent follow their body's natural rhythm. Now, we also look at fasting as a natural evolutionary survival mechanism, okay? This is something that's interesting too. As someone who's grown up, grown up on a farm, basically what I've found is that with animals, when they're sick, guess what? They don't eat. When humans are sick, guess what? They don't feel like eating. It's a natural evolutionary survival mechanism. Now, one of the things, if we look back through history, what happens when, you know, back when our ancestors were foraging for food and had to go hunt and gather, essentially, if you're sick, the last thing you want to do is expend energy energy on hunting and gathering. So therefore, if you are using this as a natural survival mechanism, you're able to not expend energy, you're able to just rest, not eat during that time, and as a result, your body starts fighting that infection. And the research shows that this is a good way for this to happen, okay? But let's take this a step further because it gets a little bit muddied here. Now, the thing that we found too is that in the research, there's a piece of research called starve a cold, feed a fever. Okay, basically what it was saying is that what they found is when they did this study is that when people were having bacterial infections, they got great results through fasting. But when people had viral infections, they didn't get as good of results. Okay, basically they're saying you want to make sure you starve that bacterial infection, but feed that viral infection. Okay, and simply because the body seemed to react better in those circumstances. But let's take a look at this study. When they did a mouse study, here's what they did. They had these mice and they basically gave them viruses. Okay. So they gave them the influenza. And what happened is they took some of the mice and they allowed them to just eat whenever they felt like it. And they took other mice and they basically force fed them. Okay. So when they went and force fed the certain uh, uh, animals in the study, basically they got really negative results. They didn't uh, get healthy as fast and they also even died in some cases. Now the animals that they allowed to just feed whenever they wanted to, they naturally fasted and they didn't eat as much. So therefore, for, what they found is that though they were eating, they just weren't eating as much and they were eating as they needed. And as a result, they basically lived through the virus and also had a much higher survival rate and also came out healthier at the other end of it. So this got a little bit confusing, right? Because we're finding that, well, fasting kind of works, but then fasting doesn't work. Well, okay, let's go ahead and talk about how I would navigate this, okay? Because I've had people telling me, well, you know what, Dr. Zorowski, I'm going into like a three-day water fast because I want to bulletproof my immune system. And according to the research, once again, with what we have to work with, that may not be the best idea. So what fasting method would I use? I would use a 16 and 8 or I would use a one meal a day. I think this is the best way to go about it because basically we want to make sure that we're feeding our body properly, but we also want to use the benefits that fasting has to offer. 
ever since this has started, I have been bouncing between one meal a day and 16 and eight. 16 and eight is gonna be the best method for most people. It's gonna be the most comfortable method. Now, first of all, I would go and use natural supplementation during my eating window. And the purpose of doing this is to help boost my immune system. I would even use antiviral herbs. I did a really powerful video on that. So if you wanna learn more about it, I'll put a link to it right here. I'll also go and put it in the description below if you wanna finish this video. Now, the other thing is, is that there's foods that you can have. Bone broth is a great one. Bone broth, broth is gonna be good because it's gonna help boost our gut health. By boosting our gut health, we inadvertently boost our immune health because about 80% of our immune health is located in our gut. Having citrus fruits is gonna be good because they're loaded with vitamin C. Remember, we wanna eat these foods during our feeding window. Garlic is great, a good antibacterial, antiviral. Spinach, ginger, broccoli is loaded with all kinds of nutrients. And then zinc is also very good for boosting the immune system. These are all great immune boosting foods. Now, when we think of zinc, we wanna think of like red meat, we wanna think of shellfish. Those are great uh, sources. If you're not getting it from a supplement. So go ahead and put in the link in the description below the fasting method. You're currently using some of the best foods that you're eating in order to boost your immune health. And then of course, go ahead and check out this video right here on a powerful amino acid that's gonna help improve lung function during the coronavirus time. Check that out. This coronavirus just sends a storm of inflammation to the lungs, but when we use the NAC, the precursor to the most powerful antioxidant in the body. It raises up glutathione, it also helps boost our immune system.